amic or autologous matrix induced chondrogenesis. So the more stable the clot is and the longer it remains there with a high cell density, uh, the theory is that the higher chance it can grow into good cartilage. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you think of those cases where you know you do a scan and you see that ulcer and you also see this huge change in the bone marrow, you know, like bone marrow lesions basically, yeah? I mean, we call it edema, but now we know that it's more complex than that. There's actually, uh, I guess you could say, um, bleeding into that bone with micro fractures, the subchondral bone is compromised. Now, we, we know that these are actually a precursor to arthritis. Once you have bone marrow edema or bone marrow lesion, you're, I think, something like nine times more likely to get arthritis or need a knee replacement compared to someone else who doesn't. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so um, traditionally, we've always been telling the patients to just take it easy, rest, you know, um, uh, walk with a pair of crutches or use a walking stick and take some painkillers. Uh, but, you know, interestingly, um, recently I've been uh, reading a little bit about um, the use of subchondroplasty. And I think oh, that's... Yes, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So I'm, my, yeah. My, my favourite operation, again, mm -hmm. um, yeah, something that's new, something that I've been doing recently. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, surprisingly, the first person that I did it on was actually a close friend of mine. He, he came to see me, uh, big bone marrow lesion, um, you know, organised subchondroplasty for him. But yeah, I must say um, the the concept is sound. Yeah, we put that the, that bone phosphate, the calcium phosphate paste into that bone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't destroy the bone. It bolsters it. It keeps it strong. Uh, it prevents it from collapsing more. So I think it's a, it's good surgery. I, I quite like it. Right, and the effects uh, here are, are pretty fast because it basically um, sets uh, the whole area yes. uh, and it solidifies the whole area um, yes. in a very, very short period of time. So all the uh, micro fractures in the area, all the trabeculae uh, uh, breakages, which are uh, trabeculae meaning um, the spongy, small little spider web like bone within, yep. The, yep. within the bone itself, yeah. they're all solidified. And because of that, the pain relief is uh, quite uh, fast and it's yes. pretty uh, good. Yes. Instant yeah. stability. Yeah, right, which is what yeah. we like to see in yeah. orthopedics. Okay, yeah. okay, and and this can be done with a little, uh, small little hole. Tiny, yeah. percutaneous. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's right. So that's what I've uh, read as well, that this is done under um, the guidance of uh, uh, an x-ray uh, in the operating theatre where it's just a little hole and the needle is placed into the, into the knee uh, through the images that you get from the x-ray and then the paste is injected in the area which is uh, most affected. Yep. Technically, very straightforward. Um, for us orthopedic surgeons, we're used to using IIs and X-rays all the time during surgery. So, um, you know, not, not difficult at all. Uh, I think the difficult part is actually picking the patient. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got to pick yeah. the right patient. Right, right. Um, but yeah. as I said, so far I've been very, very happy with the results. Okay, yeah, and it's a, it's a good procedure to combine with a uh, arthroscopy where you can deal with the um, overlying cartilage uh, injury Absolutely. or whatever else is uh, wrong in the knee. As Absolutely, well. yeah, yeah, okay. which is what I've done as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, exciting, exciting um, things coming on, bro. Yeah. I mean, you know, the the one thing that. Uh, uh, is a bit of an issue for us is that of course all of these techniques are still very new mm -hmm. I, I would not say they're experimental but they are very new there are of course regulatory constraints yes. um, not just in uh, our country itself but also in uh, a lot of other countries mm -hmm. uh, what do you think is going to happen how, how do you see the evolution of this well, I remain uh, quite optimistic uh, in this whole uh, area because um, as we know, there are more and more studies that are being done uh, all over the world and even though it's not uh, a um, universal acceptance of this particular uh, treatment um, technique, uh, but a big group of uh, surgeons as well as sports physicians in Europe have come together and they've come up with a strong consensus statement. Uh, this can be found in the link that we will uh, put down the bit below the video. Uh, the ASCA Orbit consensus uh, has uh, specifically said that there is strong clinical evidence uh, to support the use of PRP in osteoarthritis uh, and as well as a whole uh, bunch of other uh, consensus statements but I think that one was the most uh, significant and um, I'm just looking forward to see if the American Orthopedic Society uh, also echoes the same uh, and I'm quite sure that as we go forward with more and more evidence uh, we will be able to uh, then come to a better conclusion
conclusion uh, whether or not this works but uh, as it is at, at this point in time um, the evidence looks favorable uh, that this can be used in a very um, safe and uh, very effective manner Yes, yes. I, I think safe is the issue, yeah, as long as it does no harm. So that's been a very exciting, a very fruitful uh, session that we had today, uh, discussing uh, various regenerative and restorative techniques uh, for the knee. Um, and uh, if anybody has any questions or you would like to find out more about uh, these techniques, uh, whether or not it's uh, applicable to your situation, uh, please feel free to make an appointment to see either one of us.